Hi everyone and welcome to episode 12 of the Witch Doctor's Guide to ServiceNow. Today we're going to talk about how we can limit access to attachments depending on if the user has an ITIL role or not and if the attachment was uploaded by someone with an ITIL role or not. It actually came from the community so I thought I'd just throw in a video about it instead. Uh, of course this is record in the new Madrid release. And as you might notice, I changed the name from Hitchhiker to Witch Doctor just to avoid getting sued and of course better match for my book as well. So let's take a look at me, if you don't know me. My name is uh, Jaren Lundqvist aka The Witch Doctor. I've been working around with ServiceNow for a couple of years now. Everything from a technical assignment to architecture to mentoring and so on. Put down a, a couple of stuff that I have done and the latest achievement is actually my book which got published on Friday and if you'd like to reach out feel free to hit me on LinkedIn, Twitter, subscribe to this channel of course uh, and so on and of course I can't go without showing off my book if you haven't seen it go into Amazon I'll put a link on the YouTube channel as well and buy it of course if you want to I just put in a, a few points what you will learn from this book. Basically, this is me writing to myself four years ago. The stuff I would like to have learned then. Besides stuff like agent workspace and so on, because that didn't exist four years ago. But you, I think you get the point. So, enough about me. This is what we're going to look at today. So, users without ITIL shouldn't see attachment if it's been uploaded by a user with any role ITIL. So we're going to take a look how we actually can see fields on an attachment record. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit more about that, what I mean with that soon. We're going to take a look how we can extend uh, out of the box or baseline script include and use that for ourselves. And of course, we will run into some issues. You probably think about it before how can we do it when we want to change out of the box stuff. Some people say, uh, deactivate and create your own. Some people say just change it, you will notice it in the skipped record on updates. And a little bit of special case here and we'll talk about that when we get there. So let's start then. Skip this one. Here is my newly fresh developer instance and we're going to incidents and take a look and I have prepared this one. As you can see, I uploaded our beloved John Menonik picture on this one. And now, since I was an admin doing this one, I don't want Joe Employee to see, see this attachment by some reason. And that is, of course, something we will do with ACLs because it's security. So I have already elevated my roles to security admin. So I can actually do things in there. So first thing is, of course, let's take a look at the ACLs. And we are going for the system attachment table. You can from here, of course, see all of them. What we really want to have is this one, which is read for the whole record. We don't care if you can read specific fields in there or so. We just want to limit the access totally. So this is the one we want to do. So let's take a look at this one. And basically we can see we have three places to set rules. We have the roles, there are no roles, so that will return true. We have no condition in the condition builder, so that will return true as well. And last down we can see that we are actually calling a script include and the function can read in there. So this now means that we need to go and take a look what this one does. So let's do that. And if you remember, this was the only one on read. So there isn't any more ACLs for read access. So let's take a look. And the name was attachment security. So let's just hit star attachment security there we go 
and you notice this one is read only so I can't change anything here which for the start messes a little bit with us but as you can see this is the can read function and as you can see it does a little bit of checks so this is pretty much the general can read and now we run into the problem how should we handle this with the out of the box because this one will automatically give access to the end user if there is an attachment so even if I create a new ACL that will limit it this one will still give access meaning my new one is worthless then of course I can deactivate this one but since this is the general ACL it handles all of different uh, attachments then I need to rebuild the whole logic in another one so what we are going to do we are actually going to extend this script include because we can't actually do it and then we'll just modify this can read functionality now of course when we are going to set up our own conditions we need to know which fields are we going to look at and so on and let's go to the sys attachment table and this one is a little bit special because if you remember normally when you click on the eye you will get the record the form but on attachments if I click on open record it will download it which I don't want to do I want to see the fields and perhaps take the show XML to see all the fields simple I can of course hit the cogwheel and pull out all the fields or I can do like this I can just right click show matching so I only have one record then I can right click export to XML and if I do that I get the exactly same information I get as in show XML and just to show you I get this not the part down here we can remove that one so it don't get fooled uh, yours will be a lot bigger because inside the data element will be the picture so I have removed that just to not let you see me scroll down pages and pages so here is all the different information if you would like to see okay what's the, the field name for the file example of course you can go into tables and see that as well but I always like to see the field names and data in it so I can easily understand what kind of information there is so that is a quick and simple way to just fetch the XML file for that as well but so what are we going to do we're going to build our own script include we can't use this and as you can see you have multiple ways and the benefits of extending from this is that we can still call all of the other functions in here and normally when service now is nice to us they do like this I'm going to show you if we look for KB knowledge basically they do like this they have one with ending SNC and one without the SNC is read only we can't do anything in there but if we want to overwrite this one we can do that in this because this one is read and editable for us and then we always call this one meaning that if we have a modified version that's the one it will be using and not the out of the box one and I'm going to show you I did pretty much the same for the one on the ACLs so let's hit the attachment again attachment security and I just created one called custom attachment security and how do you extend it by this line here normally you have uh, another word here I can't remember it now but this is the script include I would like to extend from which is kind of nice then I just pasted in the function and then I actually made some changes and what have I done I have entered these lines and this thing over here so what was the requirements 
if it was a user without roles, it should only see attachments that was uploaded by user without roles. So if a fulfiller uploads an attachment, the end user shouldn't see it. And in this case, we only want this to happen on the incident table. So I just put in a check. Is are we on the incident table? Check, that's true. Uh, doesn't the user have the IT role? And I have a exclamation mark, meaning that we check if it doesn't. Is that true as well? It doesn't have the IT role. Then let's skip this one and take I'll remove that one as well. And take this one. I only want this one to trigger when it's interactive, when it's a human logging in to a browser or uh, the mobile app or something like that. I don't want if we have some kind of uh, integration, this being able to trigger when they're pulling attachment perhaps. So I add this check as well. Is it a, a interactive session going on? Yes. And then the last check is, of course, we need to check the one that created this attachment have that user any roles because that's a really important one as well so i basically just added a function called check created has role and i throw in the attachment sys created by value as you know this is just a string with the username in it which is kind of worthless they could have given us a reference field instead but yeah that's how it is so let's see and this one if this one returns true as well meaning the the creator has a role then it returns true so let's scroll down i can even do like this and i'll zoom in sorry for not zooming in earlier let's do like this and i'll scroll down and here you can see i'll throw in the user name i'll just need to fetch the the sys id of the user that created the record because that is the value in the table this user has role which has all the relationship between roles and users so first i go into the user table and if i find a record there with this username and you can see i use get normally with in get you just put in the sys id and you fetch that record because default it has sys id as a parameter here but if I define, I can define which field I want and say that this field should have this value. And user ID or username is of course unique, so I will only fetch one. If I get the record, then I go into the sys user has roles, say that the field user should have the sys ID of the created by user. Uh, I only of course need one hit in this case and then I do a query. Then, depending if I find a record, I will return true, the user has a role. And if I don't find anything, I need to hit false. This one can be needed to be modified if you are using, for example, CMS, where all users have at least one role, like the SNC external or SNC internal. But probably much filter out those two roles from this query so you only look for other roles and then you're safe to go so if the user has like itil or something else it will return true going up here this one will be true as well then we will say return false you're not allowed to see this one so let's see how it looks like when we test it so let's go incognito and we'll hit developers while that one is loading, let's go to our incident list. That list. Look at 51. I actually forgot one thing. That's good. We didn't change the ACL. That was the last step before this actually works. So let's go to ACLs. I only showed you the ACLs earlier. This is the one. Let's so you can see it i have just sorted it on updated so that's why it's on top we only have one read let's click on this one and now was the case we can't really deactivate this one because then it won't work on any other tables and so on but we cannot 
add another one because this one will be true and let it see the attachment. So let's hit our script include instead. I'll hit save. And now we're calling for our version uh, instead, not this one, but let me find that this one instead, which have these little extra lines. So when we go to the incident number 51, we have one attachment. If I go to yo employee, employee, and let me see if I remember his password. There we go. And let's find the incidents. 51 and Joe can't see it. You can even see that it's not visible in the activity log either. But Joe can, if you want, just hit flow designer search and that attachment is visible for him. So this is a, a quite a, a simple way how to set it up uh, like that. Uh, let me just think. I think that was pretty much it. Uh, what we did was we created our own custom script include, extended that from this one. So basically I only have my two two functions here, but as you notice there was uh, another one in the out of the box one. Then I can actually call this script include and use the functionalities that rest inside this script include instead. The other thing we needed to do was of course the access control to make sure that it's pointed on the right script include mine in this case. Um, both the script include, I guess only the script include, will of course be visible on my GitHub as I episode 12. So when you see this video, it will be there. I just haven't uploaded it yet. Uh, for last, the book again, feel free to buy it if you want. Please put in a review if you like it and uh, do some cool ratings. And Hopefully I'll be open up for a little bit more videos now when the book is published and uh, I can step aside from that one. So see you around and talk to you later.